Friday is 10.15. We're going to move to member statement. Member statement. The member for Alliburton, Kawarta, Lakes, Brock. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Halliburton County Development Corporation has been a trailblazer for businesses in Halliburton, Kawartha, Lakes, Brock. The HCDC are a dedicated group of individuals who are committed to helping entrepreneurs fulfill their dreams by connecting local innovators with the resources they need to start, maintain, and grow their ventures. In fact, they are one of the province's biggest success stories for supporting local businesses. In the last three years alone, HCDC has moved over $15 million in capital financing, which has developed over 890 jobs across the area. It is my pleasure to congratulate them on their new venue, The Link. The Link will be home to a business incubator, the Chamber of Commerce, the Arts Council, tourism and economic development staff, and services from the Business Development Bank of Canada. The HCDC has created a space that will be foundational in supporting businesses with a one-stop shop convenience for local entrepreneurs. Never afraid to think out of the box, HCDC recently partnered with the county's Places for People to launch a new community bonds program to help bring more affordable housing units to Halliburton County. I would like to thank the hard work and dedication of Executive Director Patty Tallman and Board Chair Pat Kennedy and their teams for providing leadership for community economic development in Halliburton County. Thank you. Thank you. Next member statement, the member for St. Catharines. Thank you, Speaker. I stand here today as a grandmother filled with pride, celebrating my grandson Grayson's fifth birthday. His smile, his energy, they are captivating. Grandchildren provide a line of sight on issues that may otherwise go unnoticed by grandparents. Shining a light on the pressing issues affecting families across Ontario, the challenge of securing childcare. In our province, despite promises of new childcare spaces, families continue to struggle due to the to the slow and unclear rollouts of these initiatives. The reality in the Niagara region and everywhere is a growing wait list of over thousands of names sounding an alarm bell to urgent need of accessible, affordable childcare options. This struggle is compounded by the fact that while some steps have been taken, like wage increases for early childhood educators, we still see a significant gap in support and resources for all childcare workers. The slow rollout in Ontario is primarily responsible for the lack of subsidized spots, severely impacting the ability to, and quality of care. I know that there are many grandparents in this chamber, so from one grandparent to another, we must accelerate our efforts, provide clear direction, and ensure that every family in Ontario has access to child care they desperately need. Now, Happy fifth birthday, Grace and James Walter Ukren. Uh, you are a symbol of the bright future we are fighting for. And Grammy hopes all your wishes come true. Thank you. Next member statement, the member for Flamborough Grand Brook. Good morning, Madam Speaker. It's my pleasure to rise today to highlight an exciting initiative announced yesterday at Brenby Farms in my riding of Flamborough Glanbrook. Speaker, I'm sure you'll be delighted to learn that our government, through the Sustainable Canadian Agricultural Partnership, is investing up to $25 million to expand production capacity and boost energy efficiency in the ag and food sector. The money will be provided to eligible farm and food processing businesses to help them invest in innovative technology, equipment and processes. Sean Bren, president of Brenby Farm, said, Today's announcement is welcome news for the ag sector. Growers are continually looking to innovate in order to manage constantly rising input costs, address labour shortages and market instability in an effort to keep their farms sustainable for the long term. Costs that share supports like this will help jumpstart these investment decisions and support the viability of locally grown fruits and vegetables. I applaud our government's forward thinking and encourage ongoing collaboration that aligns with keeping our farms and agri-food sector resilient and strong now and into the future. And I would like to thank Sean and all of Brenby Farms for hosting the event and for sharing his thoughts on this exciting opportunity for the agriculture community across Ontario. 
Thank you. Next member statement, the member for Hamilton Mountain. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Today I'm rising to show my love and gratitude for the 110th Grey Cup Festivals, which happened this past week in Hamilton. Thank you to the Hamilton Tourism and Grey Cup Committee, who did not miss a single detail. They worked tirelessly to bring fans from across the country to the Hammer. I was honoured to be part of the Stampede Pancake Breakfast, hosted by the Calgary Grey Cup Committee and Legion 163 in my riding of Hamilton Mountain. They served up the true spirit of community with music, laughter, and fun. Later in the day, I was continued to be amazed at the Calgary VIP event at Julius Joe's. Great energy with local leader CFL fans and the Calgary's mascot horse, Tuffy, who was piped into the bar for a cold refreshment. Saturday started with the Spirit of Edmonton breakfast, featuring all of our CFL cheerleaders, sluice juice, and fans of every team and colour. Our annual Santa Claus parade was next on the list, which also had a Grey Cup theme. Thank you to Santa and Mrs. Claus for sharing your special arrival and for bringing smiles to the faces of children of all ages who lined our streets. James Street North was a daytime place to be, with so many interactive events for families to enjoy and experience the magic of the CFL in all of its glory. Special thanks to the Convention Centre, who hosted nightly entertainment with team-themed team experiences uh, to lead us up to the big game. I know I'm out of time, Speaker, but a huge congratulations to the Montreal Alouette, Montreal Alouettes for bringing it home for the East and looking forward to being in BC. See you next year with the Cats. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Thornhill. Thank you, Speaker. November marks Hindu Heritage Month, and I'm a, pr I'm a proud person to represent members of this community in my riding of Thornhill. I recently had the privilege of attending the Diwali celebrations hosted by the Thornhill Senior Citizens Club. And this club is one of the many organizations in Thornhill, keeping our amazing seniors engaged and active. Speaker, there's nothing more effervescent than their Diwali celebration, their smiling faces, beautiful traditional clothes, fantastic food, and the music. Uh, for many years now, the president of the club, Kashmir Sankha, and his vice president, G2 Parikh, uh, have been doing a great job of bringing everyone together with creative dance and theatre performances, not only keeping the minds and the bodies active, but also preserving a connection to their culture and keeping their rich heritage alive and vibrant. But what struck me most was that the spirit of Diwali was not just in the festive decorations, but in their genuine connections, their forging between individuals, bridging together generations and creating a family within a community. And the senior citizens uh, group uh, have made me feel welcome, truly. They accepted me into their family, and celebrating with them is one of the highlights uh, of my year. And as we celebrate uh, Hindu Heritage Month, let's not only revel in the beauty of the lights and the joy and the music of Diwali, but also the community spirit that shines brighter than all the lights and candles combined. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Humber River, Black Creek. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, it's a pleasure to rise today and welcome the Moda family from my community. One year ago, merely days before World Diabetes Day on November 14th, the Modas received a shocking diagnosis that their own young daughter, Noemi, had type 1 diabetes. Speaker, type 1 diabetes is a chronic condition that affects children and adolescents requiring a lifetime of vigilant management. In Ontario alone, thousands of young lives are impacted by this condition, and the numbers are growing. Since receiving the diagnosis, the family dedicated much of their time to support other families affected by this condition and raise awareness. At home in our community, young Noemi decided she wanted to mark World Diabetes Day this year by organizing an awareness event at her school. And Speaker, last week, with the incredible support of her friends, who I know also wanted to be here with her today, a beautiful display of blue ribbons was constructed by students from all grades at her school to raise awareness and start conversations about the condition. Noemi, today, I'd like to recognize you for your extraordinary efforts in raising awareness about diabetes at your school. Your dedication and commitment to this cause have not only educated many, but also inspired many others to take action. 
Despite challenges, you have turned your personal experience into a powerful tool for advocacy, a testament that age is no barrier to making a significant impact. Your outstanding efforts in raising awareness has empowered your peers with knowledge, and your actions have truly made a difference in your school and community. So thank you for being a beacon of hope and an inspiration and a role model for all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Brantford Brant. Thank you, Speaker, and good morning. I am honoured to rise today to pay my respects to a pillar of the Brantford Brant community, Harry the Admiral Chatsis. Harry the Admiral passed away earlier this month at the age of 86, leaving a hole in our community. He founded Admiral Submarines in Brantford, a culinary staple in the late night food scene, known for its incredible sub sandwiches and the famous junk pile. I had the privilege of being served personally by Harry and Speaker. The sandwich I had was more than worth having to duck to enter the building. Having grown up in Greece under Nazi occupation, Harry became all too familiar with the, the feeling of being hungry. After moving to Canada when he was 17, Harry worked to ensure that no one in his community would experience the hunger that he had experienced in his youth. Harry never hesitated to feed those who couldn't afford food. As, and as his son Gus said, he believed that if he could fill someone's belly, that person could then focus on other things. Other than for the delicious food, Harry will be remembered for the many lives he touched with his kindness and generosity. Harry's presence will be deeply missed by the Brantford community, but the impact he had on the people of Brantford will endure for years to come. Rest in peace, Admiral. All of Brantford Brant salutes you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Don Valley East. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As much as we try to help people in our constituency office, I am always in awe of how much members of our community help each other. A local hospital serving Don Valley East, Michael Guerin Hospital, has earned its reputation as the heart of the East. It has been there during our community's toughest times serving the most marginalized, leading with clinical excellence, and being present when needed the most. It led the way in setting national records by vaccinating 10,000 and later 30,000 people with COVID vaccinations in a single day. I'm proud of our community, and we're proud of our hospital. We've stepped up to support MGH in every way that we can, by volunteering and contributing as generously as we can. But the hospital needs more help. Making a difference cannot just be up to individuals. I walked through our emergency department last week. I've spoken about this before and I will say it again. My colleagues are struggling as the needs of the community have outgrown the emergency room. Doctors and nurses are working out of a portable in the ambulance bay. Admission wards are old and in dire condition. While the area around our hospital is budding with development and there will soon be an influx of people into our community, Michael Guerin Hospital needs an influx of funding to fulfill its plan to expand and renew its facilities. It is my hope that working with this that it is my hope to work with this government to see that this funding comes through sooner rather than later for healthcare workers, for patients, and for future generations of Don Valley East. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Etobicoke Lakeshore. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And November 25th is Small Business Saturday, and I rise today to recognize all the small neighborhood gems that make big contributions to Etobicoke Lakeshore. My riding is so much richer because of the economic opportunity that these small businesses create. Last week, I had the pleasure of welcoming Glam Room on the Queensway, a new beauty clinic that offers services that make you look better. I also welcome Pokey Works, which uh, is located on North Queen and enjoyed a fresh and healthy, delicious dinner. Over the years, small businesses like Dino's Pizza on the Queensway, Le Gourmand on Lakeshore, and Phoenix Cosmetics on Bloor and the Kingsway have made valuable contributions to our neighbourhoods. These and many other small businesses like them keep our community vibrant and thriving. I also want to give out to our shout out to our seven BIAs, the Village of Islington, Mimico Village, the Queensway, Mimico by the Lake, the Kingsway, Lakeshore Village, and Long Branch for their hard work and commitment towards keeping dollars local. 
And don't forget all the Christmas markets that are happening this weekend. One is at the Franklin Horner Community Centre, and there is also one at the New Toronto Holiday Market, and many others in the community to get your stocking stuffers. The way we spend and where we spend makes a difference. Once again, I want to thank all the small business owners, workers, for their valuable contributions to Etobicoke Lakeshore. And remember, this Christmas, shop local and support your local community. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Sarnia Lampton. Thank you, uh, Speaker, and uh, it's an honour to rise once again in this Ontario Legislature. I'd like to take this opportunity to share with the Legislature the news of an innovative new investment by the Ontario government in health care delivery in rural Lambton County. On November 17th, the Canadian Mental Health Association of Lambton Kent, <clears throat> along with Blue Water Health in Sarnia Lambton and the North Lambton Community Health Clinic, launched a brand new state of the art mobile care clinic in Lambton County. The clinic was made possible by a nearly $323,000 investment by the, the um, Government of Ontario. <clears throat> the new 30-foot custom-designed walk-in clinic on wheels is providing mental health, addiction and primary care services in rural communities around Lambton County <clears throat> three days a week. So far, this mobile clinic has made stops in Sarnia, Watford, Alveston, Thedford, and Kettle and Stony Point First Nation. The mobile care clinic includes a multidisciplinary team of mental health and addiction service providers, nurse practitioners, and social workers. The clinic itself is equipped with multiple rooms to provide service <coughs> and accessibility equipment to support everyone visiting. There are no appointments needed, and of course, there's no cost <coughs> for patients to assess the service. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, the mobile care clinic is a great way to provide early intervention care close to home, thereby reducing the burden on rural residents in Lambton County to travel to access high-quality health care. I'm certain the mobile care clinic will have a tremendous impact on health care in Lambton County. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning.